Hey there, myself Rakesh and I welcome you back to my channel Automate with Rakesh. Please do subscribe to the channel. In this video, we are going to focus on the Excel use case. So in the previous video, I have given you an exercise. So if you are very new, let me explain what is this use case is all about. So here I have a set of data in the sheet one in my Excel file, right? And this data has got the primary phone number and the alternate phone number. So this is the sample phone numbers, which is there. So first of all, before in this video, I'm going to explain how to build this entire use case step by step. Okay. So here, first of all, what you do, create a simple Excel file and create a ID column, name column, location column, and primary phone, alternate phone number. And I've given some sample numbers. Okay. These are not real numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the first one. So there are, if you see, if you look at the data, there are two different numbers, you know, separated by a forward slash. And in the second row, it is separated by a semicolon. And in the third row, it is separated by a ampersand. So the first one is a primary phone number. The you know second part is the alternate phone number. Now the job is I need to read this data. And after reading this entire data table or entire table from the sheet one, I should only store the name. I should divide the values into two parts and I need to store the primary phone number here and the secondary, the alternate phone number here. Okay. So how to do that? This is all the use case. This could be a real time use case wherein you would find in a project and you will be asked to develop the code or write the workflow for this. So let's see how this can be done. So I'm going to make you understand step by step i'm going to create this workflow from the beginning i'm going to delete this and need to recreate once again for you just to let you know how this one is designed so first of all let me you know run it to show the demonstration and after that we are going to recreate the entire workflow from the beginning step by step okay so give it a quick second Okay, so the execution has started. Okay, you can see the first value has been separated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, and then it should show me the second alternate phone number. Do you see 987 65 43 2, 1. Similar way, it's going to do this, do this for all of the other numbers 147. Okay. You can compare. Okay, the alternate phone number has come. The third row has executed. The primary phone number has come. And the alternate phone number has come. Then the primary job is to write it in the file. So you can see it has written in the sheet number two. Okay, so how the entire thing can be designed? This could be a use case in your real time project or a similar one, not exactly this one, but pretty, pretty much similar one. You will have a use case. So let's see how to design this. So, okay, I'm going to delete this and we are going to start everything from the very beginning. So what is the first job? Tell me. So let me delete this or make it blank and save it. So right now the input file is this. Okay, this is my Excel file. This is my input file. Let's go to the studio and start designing. Now here I'm using the modern design. If you see, if you click on the projects tab, Click on the settings, okay, projects tab and settings. Here, in, if you go to the general, there is something called modern design experience. By default, anyone who is using the latest UI path version, studio version, then the modern design is by default enabled for them. Okay, you can, you also have an option to switch it off if you don't want to go for a modern design. So modern design is good, that is the latest design. So I'll go with the modern design. Now I'll go to the activities panel. And here I have to search for the, because I'll be dealing with Excel, right? So I'll be using the Excel activities. The very first activity I should use is the Excel process scope. Simple. This is how you will design Excel process scope. And within the Excel process scope, you should use the use Excel file. Okay. This is how a Excel process scope need to be used. First you drag and drop the Excel process scope. And within that you are dragging and dropping the use Excel file activity. Simple. After that, 
in the use excel file i need to point out to the file which i need to work on right so i'll click on this symbol and then i will go to the location and select the file so the file has been selected now once the file is selected the very first thing what i need to do i need to read the data so to read the data there is an activity called read range to read the data from excel there is an activity called read range and here there are two different activities this is the classic this is the old activity and uh, the one with comes with the green excel symbol that becomes the latest one so i'll be using the latest modern design activity because i am using the modern design process scope so i have to only use the i should go with the modern design activities okay so here i am going using the read range activity and here let me click on the plus sign excel and then indicate you can you can also go with this options but i'll hit on indicate in excel and then i'll go to the excel file give it few seconds because the ui path will try to integrate itself into this excel so first of all give it few seconds so here you should get an integration button okay i think that did not happen for me let me try it again plus sign excel indicate in excel okay now it has come okay so here what i should do i should select the range where i should walk and hit on confirm this much is clear so now what i am doing i have read the data so once i read the data it should store inside a variable so i'll create a right click and create a variable and i'm going to say the variable name as dt1 data table 1 okay so this data table variable if you go to the variable panel you can see data table variable has been created fine so once the data table variable is created now the entire data from the excel file is getting stored in the dt1 variable so i have to work with this dt1 variable so let's do what i should do i should go through the data right one by one so i'll use a for each loop simple and here i'll be using the for each row in data table okay because i'll be dealing with data table variable so i'm using the activity for each row in data table this activity okay now let's enter the variable name so what is happening when the dt1 uh, the for each row runs from the dt1 the dt1 variable will contain the entire data as shown here in the excel file so first of all when the loop runs it's going to run all this data it is going to show all the data then it will go to the next row it is going to have all the data then it will go to the next row then it will have all the data okay this is how the loop would run okay so now what i will do current row dt1 is done so what is my objective i would like to separate this two values now for that what i will do i'll use a assign activity drag and drop this assign activity and here in the assign activity i'll simply say so the prime phone number right so i'll say i'll create a variable first right click variable and then i'm going to say prime ph okay and then how do i get the value so when i know the loop is running like this so what should i do how do i get this cell value i have taught it in the previous video i am going to show you to get the cell value all i have to do write the for each loop current row so this is a variable which is going to hold the data one by one it will go through the loop right so it's going to contain one value at a time so this row then second row then third row like that so to access the cell all i have to do simply write the variable current row so what where this current row is coming from the for each loop and then i need to write the column name so which from the row which column name value you would like to get so i would like to get this column name so i'll copy the column name and then going to paste it so that way it's going to hold the value you know first it is going to show this value this value and this value you can use a message box and see how this values are populating okay so this is what the syntax is row current row and then the column name this has to be typed exactly if you make mistake then it may not or it might throw you an error so ensure you copy paste in a proper way so this is done after that i need to do a split right so i'll first what i will do this will be in the object format so i will change it to dot to string so it will convert itself to dot to string fine and then i'll write something called split so split is the function 
so what this will do whatever is the, whatever the data is there inside this cell right inside this particular space or inside this particular cell the, the loop is going to run one by one so whatever the data is there inside this cell it's going to split that and how i would like to split it i'll use a i will use two moon brackets and then i am going to use two curly braces okay now inside the curly braces i should use two double quotes and i should define what is that character you would like to split so i i will mention the forward slash if you see for the first one the character is forward slash so i'm going to mention forward slash go and put a comma here and then again put a double quote what is the second type of character available semicolon right so i'm going to use a semicolon okay and then i'll go and put a comma and then what is the third ampersand symbol so i will use double quote and then use a ampersand so whatever the symbols are there through which i would like to split so all i have to mention there okay so once i mention there what would happen the moment it splits there will be two different data right for example this particular cell what what is the output one output will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and the other output after splitting would be 9 so there will be two outputs 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 so that means if there are two outputs the data has to be a array right it, it will be array kind of a data one after the other other right there are two values it's not a single value in that case to access the first value I will say zero. So how this one works, you know, many people might have little bit of confusion. Rakesh, right? what is this you have written? You know, a dot zero. What does that mean, right? And how does that work? So first of all, let's check the variable uh, primary pH. Okay. Let me show you how that works. Okay. There are bit of things that I forgot to write. So once you mention this, right? Two two string dot split and mention this, then the syntax says you have to write comma. And then you have to say string, take it slightly up, yeah. Then you have to say string split options dot none. Okay, so this is the exact syntax you have to write. What is the syntax? String split option, just to make it more readable, I'll say, I'll make it capitalized. String split options dot none. So this is the exact syntax to split when there are multiple delimiters, multiple delimiters or separate characters, right? So this is the syntax and then all I have to do just to access the first value of the array, all I will do, I'll put a zero. Now this one, many people will be confused. Uh, what is this Rakesh? Now why did you write zero? So let me show you, okay? Now for that, how this one works, let me open a text test XML file. And there I'm going to show you. So if I say, um, let me delete all this. Okay. Let's say there is a, uh, there is a, uh, let me delete. Let's create it. So let's say uh, there is a variable I'm going to create. Okay. So the variable name I'm going to give it as A. A is the variable. Now let's say in the A, I'm going to have multiple values. So I will say curly braces and I'm going to say 1, comma 2. So there are two different values, let's say. There are two different values in the array. So this becomes an array. So all I have to do, go to the variable panel. And here I need to select array of t and then select int this is integer, right? So I'll say, um, so uh, here we are taking the example of a string. So I'll keep it as string. Okay, and leaving, even though they are want to, I'm leaving it as a string. So the moment you leave it as string, put double quote so that this becomes string. Okay, now what I'm going to say, hey, uh, hey, can you show me the first value? Can you print the first value? So what you will do, will, are you going to use a loop? No, you don't have to use a loop for this. So I'll use a message box, not necessary. And if I say A, A is an array, right? A is a variable and this is an array and A in bracket, if I say zero, what is the output? Now let me copy and paste. And if I say a bracket one, so to access any value of an array, you have to just provide a index number within the moon bracket. So zero, one. So this is the index number of the first one, zero, and the index number of second value is one. So if I run this, the output will come as one and two. A zero means the output will show us one, 
uh, 1 and the second output will show us 0. Okay, give it a quick second. Do you see the output has come 1 and the second message box it will print 2. So that is the use. So if you have to access the first value of the array you have to simply mention bracket 0. And the same thing I have done it here in this syntax where I am just saying 0. So this must be clear. Okay, so this one is going to fetch the primary phone number. Now let's copy paste. So you must have got the idea. Copy paste and here let's get the if I write 1 what would happen it is going to give me the second value so I will simply say okay and I will going to I am going to create a variable here for the alternate phone number I'll remove this and I'm going to create a variable and I will say alt phone number so this way I got the primary phone number in the primary ph variable and this alternate phone number in the alternate ph variable so and you got the syntax okay okay right so this this is the way to get the phone numbers so once you get the phone numbers what we would like to see we would like to just print and see okay just if it is coming properly later we can delete the message box in a real time project right so this is just simply test it if it is coming properly okay so i am writing primary ph uh, and then i am writing alternate ph for demo purpose okay alt ph done so both of them have been written now let's see if this is working now or not then we will try to write, write this set second set of workflow to write this to sheet 2 okay that is again a set of logic that we have to apply now let's run this and see if the outputs are coming properly or not so i'll keep the sheet 1 open give it few seconds okay so you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 has come properly. Very good. 9, 8, 7, uh, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 has come properly. Very good. 1, 4, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So everything is properly been fetched. So I got the primary phone number. I also got the alternate phone number. Okay. So this has come properly. Now what we will do? We tested it. All fine. So I am going to delete the message box. Good. Now the next thing is I need to write this to sheet number 2. Okay. Now to write this to sheet number 2 what I will do I will create a data table before the for each loop. Okay. So I will create a data. So how do you create a data table just by using a build a data table activity. I will drag and drop the build data table activity above the outside of the for each loop. Now here in the data table I am going to hit on data table and I am going to give the name. So what is the name? The first one is name. Okay. Data table name which is a string. I um, will remove all this text is not required. And then the column 2 is what? Primary pH. So I will say prime pH and click on OK. So I am building the all the columns required. Click on the plus sign and then say alt pH click on ok done all uh, different I will keep it a string ok all different string so this is done and I am going to click on ok this is a blank data table I have built once you build this you create a data table variable which is going to hold that uh, data so create variable and I am going to say d2 hit on enter so what happened now a d2 variable has been created which is the second data table with the blank data there is no data at the moment inside the data table apart from the headers okay now outside of now i have to write it right so every time the primary ph and alternate phone uh, alternate phone number is coming within the for each loop what i should do i will use an activity called add data row okay i'm using the activity called add data row now here um, what what are the what are the different things that I need to add? So I'll use a current array row. Okay, I'm using array row. You can also use data row. There are videos which I have created how to use data row, how to use array row. So here in this example, I'll go with array row. So array row, and here simply have to mention where it should write or where to add the data in the data d t d two variable, right? What is the variable name? D two, right? Yeah, d two. Okay, fine. So d2 variable is the data table variable within that I am going to add the values. So I will go to add data row property panel. 
so what are the things i need to add so that three requirements name primary phone number alternate phone number so i'll simply write so where the name is they tell me now we are inside the for each loop if you see the add data row has been added inside the for each loop so the current row will contain first row data i told you when the loop is running on the data table 1 the current the for each loop will have the first row data so if i have to get this value a name value all i have to say current row in bracket i have to say name isn't it so i'll copy this column name r data row array row and here i am going to mention current row variable in bracket within double quotes i will say name and i will say two string so this becomes my first column data it will write into the data table then i will put a comma right so and all this when you are using um, array row right array row when you are using you should use a curly brace starting in the end so this is the first column what is the second column second column is your variable prime ph okay ensure your, your variable spellings are correct okay prime ph is the variable and what is the third one alt put a comma alt alternate ph okay so comma so comma dots these things are very very important so ensure we write it in a proper way and double check it in case there is a, something wrong done so now what would happen while the for each loop is running it's going to keep on adding the data it is going to add the name rakesh then it's going to add the primary phone number and then it's going to add the alternate ph to the data table which is currently blank okay so it is going to add all the values rakesh primary phone number alternate phone number while the for each loop is running when the for each loop runs in the second time it's going to have this value this row value then it's going to add deepak then it's add primary phone number and the alternate phone number because we have already written the logic so that way it's going to keep on adding the data using the add data row activity so once the data table is done once the for each loop has completed its job outside of this for each loop what i'm going to do i'll use a write range activity so that i can write this data table values into the sheet number two so here um, when you are doing a write range let me type it again uh, there is something called write data table to excel okay this is the modern um, design name write data table to activity name so let me drag and outside of the for each loop i'm going to paste it somewhere outside of the for each loop and here what to write so what to write you want to write what the data table d2 what to write d2 um, and then your destination where would you like to write that so click on the plus sign excel indicate in excel let's go to the excel go to the sheet 2 i'm going to indicate the space hit on confirm or else if you are not sure about this space simply select the sheet 2 okay so once it is done uh, append i don't want to append exclude headers no i want to include the headers so no need to do anything else so uh, everything is done now let's do a test let me run it run file let's see if there are any errors we will fix that okay so there is no error you can see all the data has appeared properly through this workflow so i am pretty sure you must have learned a lot of things through the entire workflow and you have um, uh, you know you, have, you must have made note of the important learning points uh, in this video so thank you guys for watching and in case anyone has not subscribed to our channel um, you know we would like to let you know that there are a lot many people around the world have got jobs uh, by following our content they were able to clear the advanced develop uh, developer uh, certification uh, from uipath there are a lot of things you know a lot of benefits you will find the moment you start uh, you know following the videos uh, that we have kept on our channel so please do subscribe so that you get to know the latest updates latest videos that i'm uploading on a regular basis that you will be able to take benefit uh, from those videos so please do subscribe and uh, we are going to meet with one more use case in the next video or one more video in the next video. Take care guys. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.